upstairs now, downstairs with the was the um, repair and restoration area, and here's the collection, which is kind of squeezed in here. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh, there's a Mach 1, there's a Boss 302, an original Boss 302 with the factory sticker. Gary is meticulous on his authenticity of some of these cars. Here's a 442. Let's see if we can find out what's going on here. This is, uh, not sure what year it is. Matador Red, 4800 bucks. Doesn't say the year. S, S. They made them in a, oh, I should know this. They made them in like a half a dozen colors in 69. The reason you see most of these in white is because half of the 859 that they made were white. Uh, Raven Black is a much less uh, seen color. He found, he bought this car locally a little while back and uh, got it. <laughs> he got it, it was a nice car. It had been modified a little bit under the hood. They put like a 460 crank in it and the valve covers were polished and whatnot. The interior was perfect. It was brand new and he really, he loves nice interiors. He loves doors that close with a click. He loves exhaust systems <clears throat> that look like they're new. They, these are all things his. Uh, this car had a little bit of a, it had a little bit of paint work done here and he bought it and he's like, uh, you yeah, know, it's not bad. I think I can live with it. And I'm thinking to myself, no, you can't. And yeah. Sure enough, <laughs> it got uh, completely painted. Uh, this is a, a really nice concourse restoration and it was rewarded by being good guys, muscle car of the year, where they, they pick one at each show around the country and then they pick the best of the best. And this car won that in 20, I want to say 16 or 17, was it? 16. Yeah. 16? All right, so that was a uh, one. He's, he's had a white one in the past. There's a burn. Uh, there's a black jade one that is now in the Phil Mitchell collection across town that he had. Uh, they're neat cars. Uh, if, if Boss 429s, if you want to go broke, buy one that's a project that's incomplete <laughs> because basically everything under the hood is pretty specific to these cars. They actually had to move the shock towers an inch or two apart. That's why they're inset into the aprons on each side. So as a result, everything like the, so the, now the brace that goes across that ties those shock towers together, that has to be wider. The fan is specific. Every piece under there is specific. So if the parts aren't there, everything you have to buy is like $1,000 or $2,000 or $3,000. So it's very expensive, but they're like Hemi Kudas where they're just one of those cars when there's just wall-to-wall -wall engine, it just impresses people, even if they're not car people, um, when, he's, when he saw it. Forty years later, he's given an opportunity to buy uh, this, this car along with another one out of a collection down south. He buys it, it comes up here, he opens the owner's manual, Coma Washington. Okay. One of the gentlemen that worked for him, he, he ran the name by him, he said, do you know this guy? He goes, yeah, that's my father-in-law. <laughs> I was like, really? The guy passed away, but that, that was his car. But it, it can't be his car. His car was destroyed. This man had bought the car new, kept it perfect, showed it, and uh, or it, it was, he had it. it was a, it's a 9,000 original model car. That's original paint. That's original interior. It's never been restored. The gentleman that had it sold it to a friend of his with the understanding that he would have first right to buy it back if he wanted to. That, that gentleman that, was, that had the car took it to a show down south like 25 years ago and was offered what was then crazy money for it, probably like 25 grand. He sold the car, but instead of telling his friend that he sold the car, he said it was lost in a towing accident and it's gone. So <laughs> the man found out that the kid's car was still alive. Gary had it. Gary figures out that it's the car that he lusted after when he was 13 years old. The same exact car. So the odds that a car like that could survive in that condition and end up in the collection of somebody as anal or attentive as Gary McKay is beyond 
<laughs> reason to think that that could happen. But that is an amazing, I think it's, it's probably the nicest original uh, 63 Galaxy out there. There's, there's some that, there's one or two that have even fewer miles, but they weren't stored quite as well, from what I understand. So if you get a chance to look at that, the details in that car, the, the piping and the, all the, the, the XL interiors are really intricate. Um, it's just, it's a thing of beauty. The car next to it, he had when I met him in the, um, he's been refining and working on this. It was a nice car when he got it, but it's, it's super nice now. There's just, uh, it's a really, it's a really excellent example of the, of that, um, that so, model year. 67 Shelby's, for those of you that are into them, they're, they're really an interesting year if you're into cars, just because they were, Shelby was kind of a small, kind of a small outfit run inside of a big outfit, and they would kind of do things seat to the pants, and then figure out they were either not working well or, or illegal. They'll, there's things like the first 200 cars or so had running lights here, and then they found out that was illegal in a few states, so that they had quit doing that. The the way that the tail lights are mounted can be concave or convex. Uh, that. Cr by, by putting it out later, that meant they could cut the tail panel less to fit those. Uh, these are cougar. These are cougar tail lights this year. The '68 downstairs, the tail lights that are full width down there, those are '65 Thunderbird tail lights that they repurposed for that, that kind of thing. Um, '67 Shelby's almost never have front ends that fit well because they had problems with the the fiberglass manufacturers, and then the other part was. Ford gave Shelby a, a crash-tested Mustang prototype to make their parts off of, so it was kind of nice. was kind of wonky, and they made parts for it, and then when they put them on good cars, it didn't fit, so it caused them a lot of fits. Which ones are GT 500 KRs? Those were when the Ford brought out the Cobra Jet engine. 428. Cobra Jet version of the 428 after that white. 135 cards. So that was right. December of 67. So when you get into like January, February of 68, when the Cobra Jet engine came out, then the 500 KR utilized that. And it was different because it had uh, it had that engine. It changed like the air cleaner. So the, did they have regular GT 500s and GT 500 KRs? Yeah, but KRs essentially supplanted 500s okay. mid year. Right. There was there was overlap, but essentially that became the, the new thing. And then. If you read the Shelby history, KR was was a quick middle finger by Shelby because he'd heard GM was going to come out with a king of the road model of something, and he's <laughs> like, "I move faster than, than Chevrolet," and he just stuck so, it on there. Yeah, so so you know the the GT three fifties they came up with that pretty arbitrarily. They asked like, "What was the distance between a couple of the shops at the airport uh, assembly plant three fifty? Okay, it's a GT three fifty because they have." 306 horsepower, 289s that first year. There's no 350 in it. And then when they had the big block one, well, you know, 500. I think 500 came mostly from, well, you got Andy 500, you got Daytona 500. Let's make a GT 500. What the hell? But a um, couple. The other, and a lot of times he's got a stock 57 Ford that he will park next to it. And he's got a 37 or 39 Ford that he used to have a 39 soccer. And it is. I love modifications where you, you, you're not quite sure what they did, but you just know it's better, and that's kind of what, what, what he loves to do there. This, this car went to uh, appraise it, and it still had original paint on it, and uh, John had it painted, actually. And it's amazing that it got painted red again, because all of John's stuff was painted black. That was his deal. He just he painted all his cars black, and you can't do that to this one. Um, it is the JL8 disc brakes and the cross rim have been added to this car. They're not original to it. It's a uh, it's a cool car. The, the probably the on '69 Camaros. I love deluxe interiors. The the, the as opposed to the, the standard interiors and the reproduction door panels and uh, things just aren't quite there and. Most, I think both of these cars, this one especially, has a perfect original interior. It's also an original Comfort Weave interior car. Uh, Comfort Weave is a, that woven vinyl uh, that, was, that you guys saw in the late 60s and 70s that was fairly prevalent. 
anybody that it was also in a lot of the 67 Shelby's and uh, other cars of the era the, the process for that used very big complex machines and most of those got scrapped there was one left that was making all those things and when the uh, when the tsunami hit Japan a decade ago the last machine got swamped and killed and <laughs> There's nobody that has a machine that actually makes this anymore. So if you want to do a comfort weave type interior on your car, you either have to find new old stock material or you do without. So thankfully it, it had it when he got it. But I was trying to figure out, because we were looking for it for something else. And I'm like, why is this stuff so hard to find? And I figured out, well, the aftermarket isn't big enough to warrant apparently what a complex and large machine this is to retool for it. I think it uh, came out of a dealer in Oregon. Um, nice understated car. Is what it is. This, if Gary were here, he could tell you a sad story about he's only wrecked one car in his life. He got, as a young man, he got uh, a little anxious and over, got past the brake capability of an early GTO, which anybody who's driven an early GTO knows that that's an easy thing to do. Uh, ran, it, ran, out of, ran out of space and brakes and put it into a building. And he always regretted losing that car, so when this one became available, he bought it. And it was uh, it's an original red with a uh, black interior, uh, three, three deuce car. And then it had a white interior when he got it. He switched it back, and he was going to make a nice driver out of it. And he got, it got disc brakes on it, and it got a couple things. And then as they got into it... The gold became more like the 57 Ford, so then it, the disc brakes came off, things came up, and it became, uh, uh, it's kind of a piece of jewelry now. The, it, the motor in it looks stock, but it's actually a 400 and, it's mid 400 cubic inches now, I think. That was back when it was going to be a driver, that was important, but uh, 